Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 7 of my Vlogmas journey to completion on Christmas Day. And today, I just want to ask, how are you guys today, huh? Today I'm going to talk to you about the movie Howl's Moving Castle. It's another film of Studio Ghibli's where Hayao Miyazaki, or Miyazaki Hayao, who directs this film. I talk a little bit about Howl's Moving Castle, my November, my November... My November film favorites where I where I talked about like well I'll link that down in the description below so you guys can check it out. It's basically me talking about all the films I saw in theaters that and me just talking to you about it. Anyway, but yeah, I saw that in theaters in November. And the reason why because J Kids J Kids is like a distributing company, I think. And they were able to and they also they license they sell DVDs of, J of Studio Ghibli. And for like in 2017, starting I think around summertime, maybe June or something, I'm not sure. But basically they had it where each month they'll have one, one Ghibli movie that they'll show in theaters in selected cities and in, in selected cities, in selected city states and selected theaters. And for two to three days they'll have one in Japanese, so there's English subtitles and they'll be English dub. And I was able to go see it with my friends. We got, went to go see it in subtitles. And I, I love this film so much. I even have the DVD. And I've seen this so many times. But it's just different when you see it in that big screen. But, um... But yeah, today I'm going to talk to you about How's Moving Castle. In Japanese, it's Haoru... Haoru no... Haoru... Haoru... Haoru no Ugokushiro. <laughs> so about the film, basically Sophie, who works in like this, she works into her, she works in her late father's hat shop, and basically one day while she went to go visit her sister, she meets the mysterious wizard Hal, and he kind of gets her out of sticky situation, and then after that, the jealous witch of the West saw, heard about Sophie meeting Hal, so she, so the witch, the witch of the West thought like, hey, maybe they're like. You know, but anyway, so he she finds Sophie, and to get back at Sophie, she casts a curse on her, which basically turns into an old woman. And so Sophie runs away from her house, getting as far because she don't want to like burden her, her mom. I think it's her mom or her stepmom, but anyway, it's her mom, and her the rest of the shop. So she leaves, and she winds up, she winds up me, she winds up fighting the house moving castle and basically she enters there and she kind of employs herself as the cleaning lady of house moving castle and then that's how so she's trying to break her spell while also working for how and it's a very lovable it's a very loving and, and it's a very loving and emotional journey and i really want you guys to watch it if you have not it's a really good movie so if you don't know so in the Japanese if you write if you read it in Japanese if you read it, if you watch it in Japanese if you have not Hal is voiced by Kimura Takuya and if you don't know who he is he's a very popular he's a well-known actor he did several acting and movies and dramas in Japan but he's also he was in this group called SMAP which was a huge boy band in Japan and it was part of Johnny's Entertainment but unfortunately I think they disbanded yeah they disbanded so but the he voices in this film which I really like because I really like SMAP and then if you don't know Malko who who Malko he's um he's Howl's apprentice and he's just a little kid but he's voiced by Ryonosuke Kamiki if you don't know who he is, he's in several films, and I'm trying to figure out what other films he he's in. He was in, but he was pretty well. If he he's a pretty well known Japanese actor too. And then the English dub, Christian Bale voices Hal, and so that's always interesting. And then Billy Crystal plays Calcifer, who's like Hal's fire demon. And in the Japanese one, it's um, it's Oizumi Yo. And if you don't know who Oizumi Yo is, he's a very funny actor. I liked him, but if you ever played the Professor Layton series games, he voices Professor Layton in the Japanese version. So that's always a cool thing to know, ha huh? ha. Huh? Oh, and Mockled in the English one, English dub, is Josh Hutch Hutch Hutcherson. The guy from um, uh, with the fire, 
Hunger Games. <laughs> Hunger Games. It's not English dubs I can handle. And Howl's Moving Castle's English dub is one of, the, one of them that I can handle. That one is Spirit Away. I can handle both of theirs. But some other Ghibli films and some other, like, just anime in general. I'm not really into the English dubs. But Howl's Moving Castle is a pretty good in the English dub, especially in my opinion. And the guy who plays Calcifer, Billy Crystal, he has a lot of, like, well known well-known quotes from that movie as Calcifer. So I really hope you guys check it out. But um, just to go really into deep of the film itself. So basically each of the characters, I feel like you can relate to them in somewhat, in some way and form, kind of. Like in Sophie, she's kind of, at first she's unconfident with herself. And she's like, oh, I'm not really pretty. Why would Hal? Because they were saying how Hal likes pretty women. And Sophie's like, oh, I'm not pretty, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. Some people feel that way. Some people are not unco are un are not confident with themselves like me. <laughs> and then Hal, Hal's like this powerful wizard and stuff, but he, but whenever he's faced with a responsibility, he just runs away. He runs away from his problems, like a lot of people can probably can probably relate to. I know I can. I know you guys can too. I know. I know. I saw this. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, Hal does it too. Even though Hal's like a powerful, he's very, he like runs away. He even asks Sophie at one point when Sophie's like an older lady to, to go to go to like the Magistry Kingdom or whatever to let them know that, oh, Hal is a very scary, I meant, is a scaredy cat and that you should, you shouldn't, he's, he's no good. That kind of thing. So the basic, that's one of it. Calcifer, Calcifer is very fun. I liked him. But yeah, basically Sophie and how you can kind of, you can relate to them. You can, there's one, there's, there's a funny scene where they're going upstairs and the, the, their reaction of Sophie and the Witch of the West, they meet up and they have to go up to like tons of stairs. Spoiler alert, if you don't, if you, if you don't want to know, but they skip this part or something like that. But basically, they're going up these stairs and basically their reaction is basically me. So watch that kind. So watch the movie if you really want to see that one. Howl's Moving Castle. You can kind of see how Howl's, Mo Howl's Castle represents him. Like you see in the film, Howl's Moving Castle is like this huge, huge, yeah, huge structure. And it looks very powerful. And it, but, but if you look... If you look really into it, it's kind of messy. Like the the way it's built is kind of mess. Yeah, it's kind of messy and all put together. And inside the house, when Sophie sees it, it's like a huge mess too. But it's always. But then, like even though it's all messy, it's still going. Like it's always moving. It doesn't really stop at one place for too long. That's basically how. So House Moving Castle is actually based off this novel by Diana Wayne Jones, and it's how it's this, it has the same name, House Moving Castle. Um, I will link down below the, um, the website for where you can buy the novel yourself if you want to. And I was, there's this blog that I read that they had, like, they read the books and there was interest, it was very interesting to see how they compared, like, the difference between the books and the movies. I think it's a really cool way how they did it. And I'll link that blog down below if you guys want to check it more after this video. There's some things that I didn't know, basically, that's kind of, like, in the, mostly in novels, like in movies, the movies kind of compress what a novel has. So even though it's a novel, even though it's a good film, it doesn't probably have all the information or the little details that you get through novels. And but in, so in this one, so basically Sophie, you see, has she has one sister, but actually in the novel she has two sisters. There's a, I guess one of the sisters hooks up with Michael, and I'm like, no. I don't know, but I just see Malcolm's just a little kid. It's like, no, you're too young for this. Ah. <laughs> but I guess in the novel, he's more like a teenagerish kind of, like preteen teenagers, I guess. But in the movie, he looks like a little kid, so I'm like, stay that way forever. But, um, so base, and then I guess it's like Sophie doesn't realize it, but she's actually a witch too. So basically, she's she runs a hat shop. But I think she can talk to inanimate objects or just objects in general and she can kind of give them life, I think. That's kind of, that I, like, when I read that part about how Sophie can actually be, like, a witch, that kind of made sense with some of the things. Because, um, because at first Sophie, her pet, her personality makes it so everybody loves her. And, like, she meets Turnip Head, who's basically, like, this walking scarecrow but he has like a turnip as a head so he's turnip head basically sophie was able to like kind of bring him back to life and when sophie gives calcifer her hair at one point that gives calcifer so much power basically sophie's helping howlin 
counselor for to deal with their problems. But I'm wondering, for me, like, how is she able to do this all? Like, is she just a really special person that was able to do all this? But basically, she probably has, like, her own powers, too. And in the novel, she battles against the Witch of the West, and she defeats her with her own fire demon, sort of. So that's what I kind it was interesting for me. Because in certain part, parts of the movie, you see her when she, turks, she turns young. Like, she goes back to her younger self. Usually that's when she's either really happy, or she's very confident in herself, or she's very confident in what she's talking about. So they were saying how whenever she's very confident, or she kind of acknowledges her powers, that's when she's able to turn back to her younger self. She also liked that when she's asleep, too. So maybe that's when she's confident in herself or at peace with herself, that she's able to break her own curse. Yeah, she kind of does break her own curse towards the end. Yeah, I didn't realize. And it was so weird at the end, she's like just kissing everybody. It's like, oh, she just really loves everybody. But um, this film, I really love the soundtrack. If you have not heard How's Moving Castle, the soundtrack, I ask you to go on YouTube and look up the soundtrack because the soundtrack is very beautiful. And it's probably one of my favorite soundtracks of the studio. Well, all Studio Ghibli soundtracks are very beautiful. But I really enjoy this How's Moving Castle soundtrack. So you should look that up. I really love the relationship between all of them, especially Sophie relates to all the characters, like her friendship with Malcolm. How Malcolm, Malcolm's like just a little boy, but he really cares for Sophie after, after, cause like Sophie's able to kind of tam, um, tame Calcifer, and that that really surprises Malcolm. So basically, he respects her, looks up to her, just as he looks up to Hal, and it's really cute how he's always so. Um, He's always so protective and worries about Sophie whenever Sophie does something drastic. It's just a really cute relationship they have between each other. And it's interesting to see how Sophie, how she can bring so many people from like different relationships to bring them all together into one place. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all I have to say about How's Moving Castle. It's a really fun movie to watch. It's a very fun movie to watch with your friends or family. I watch it with my sisters and the... Yeah, I watch it with my sisters, and we all enjoy it, and we can probably quote some of it. But it's a good movie. I, I think you guys should watch it. It's a really good film to, to just watch. You should watch all the Ghibli movies if you can, but How's Movie Castle is a good one. If you're not really into the animation kind of thing, How's Movie Castle is a good one, in my opinion. It's rated PG, so it's a good film to just watch with your family. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please give a thumbs up if you do. And please look forward. I'm going to try to do a video where I talk about Ghibli Studio Ghibli in general, just to talk to you a little bit of history, a little bit of what what they do, and um, the other movies that they're making. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. I'll see you guys later in my other videos, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you do, and I'll see you guys again later. Bye.